all, and welcome to My Xbox and Me, episode 311. I am one of your hosts, MC Fixer, alongside the one and only Crash. How are you? I don't like you right now. <laughs> what? What, what have I done you can't, now? You can't, you can't change it like that from week to week to week. I like, I like it orderly. I like knowing what to expect. I don't like the change up. But now that Matt's not here and you knew, I got to change something up. So you decided not to go with the too fresh crush. Some would say I'm fix. good at my job, Crush, and I like to keep everyone on their toes around here. Everyone's got to be on their tippy toes. If you're working with me, Crush, you got to be on your tippy toes. you got to be ready to go. You never know if I'll call you too fresh, Crush, or I just call you Crush. You never know. You never know, Buzz. You never know. I hate it. I hate it here. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, there's no worse for you to go, so you're stuck <laughs> with me. You're stuck with me, unfortunately. True. Very you're true. Stuck. Um, how you been, bro? Are you good? I'm, I'm good. You know, not too. We bad don't of you. talk. No. We don't play games. We don't talk no. in the moment. At the moment, it's just podcast. You've Silence become like everybody else. You've become like everybody else in my life who used to podcast with. Won't speak to him all week. With podcast, how's your day? Yep, and then gone again. Then gone again. You're too busy. I am very. Busy. You know, <laughs> you stream at the times we used right. to talk. Do you know? So like. <laughs> I know, it's almost crazy that I've been more successful since we stopped talking. How weird. I know. Who, crazy, who right? Have thought, crazy, who would have right? thought <laughs> that we just, that if when we stop getting in a Discord call and complaining about stuff and actually start working on it, it gets better. Wild. I never would have saw it coming. I never would have saw it coming, personally. If you don't know, My Xbox and Me is our weekly Xbox podcast here on YouTube.com slash My Xbox and Me. And, of course, on all podcast services. Please drop us a five-star review with a very kind message on iTunes. It helps more than you imagine. It really does. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Even if you're watching on YouTube now, usually we got the... Usually... We got the audio listeners. YouTube audience, I'm coming at you now. Even if you watch on YouTube, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button, leave a five star. We would appreciate it. We'd appreciate it. Speaking of the movement, Crash. Yeah, the movement. Speaking Halo of with a the boys? movement. What is Halo going with on? the boys? I don't like, it. I, don't like we're, it. Uh, I checked today. Mm -hmm. We're at uh, 1470. Okay. We're 30 away. I'll be honest, no. 30 in a week. Uh, I mean, f 30 away. 30 away? 30 in a week is doable. I don't think we're going to hit it. I'm going to be 100% honest. No, we. so, okay, I've just looked at the thing. So, yeah, we're at 1467, 1467 subs. Um, do, you know what's, do you know what's getting me? Is is people like, shout out to Ant Gore, and people are like, like, yeah, I had five counts, so I subbed on all of them. Like, yo, this is some bull. I'm getting done out here. We're at 1470. On my end, it says we're at 1,467. Are you checking from the channel? I'm checking directly in the channel. I'm, I'm checking there as well. I'm, look, I'm right. Okay. You're wrong. You right? just don't want to, okay. Whatever you say. I'm right. You're wrong. Doesn't matter how it goes down. But yeah, hashtag Halo with the boys um, has become the movement on Twitter and uh, across all social I'm, media. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I am as well. The amount of tweets. The amount I'm of shocked. Like, three tweets, all that stuff. I didn't expect it. I'll be 100% honest. I don't like it. I don't like it. I, like I don't want to play I'm Halo with fan. you guys. I do not want to play Halo with you. I think you do. I don't. This is not. Hey. See, you know, like when people do like the whole, oh, yeah, don't do it so you can go sub. No, seriously, sub a week later. Like, generally, I do not want to play Halo with them because I do not have time, number one. I'm, we're going to uh, talk about my back catalog when we get into Wasp in our box. But. I just don't have time, Crash. But I think you hit me up in the DMs. Like, I can't believe this is going so well. I can't that wait to play Halo with happen. the boys. You're such a liar. <laughs> You're happened. such a liar. I hate your guts. I really, You're such I really a liar. Think that happened. I can't believe you just tried to do that. I cannot believe it. Uh, if you want the show early, head over to patreon.com slash mcfixer. Uh, toss us a few bucks, help support the show, keep us on the air, and all that good stuff. We are still talking about doing two episodes a week. Um, 
over on Patreon. So if you want to be a part of that and there's something that you considered, we would love your feedback on letting us know um, if we should do it or not, because that would help us a great deal. Big shout out to the Patreon producers, uh, Aaron Guard and FNH Paul. Your continued support means more than you will ever know. So thank you very much for the support this week, lads. Topic of the show. A little video game came out, Crush. You may have heard of it. Yeah. It's called Deathloop. Oh, that one. Yeah. Don't ask me why we have got so many questions about Deathloop when we are my Xbox and me and the game isn't out on Xbox. Oh, wait. I know why. Because Xbox own the game. Um, I've played the game and I wasn't really planning on talking about it here on the podcast, but we'll talk about it in Wasp in Our Box for those type of thoughts. But... We've got a lot of questions, so we're going to talk about Deathloop real, real fast. Uh, our first one comes from Little Smitty, uh, Matt, who says, it says optional question, I guess he asked too, uh, because it's kind of loaded and a bit snide. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm strapping in. Would Deathloop have been given a 10 out of 10 if it was an Xbox exclusive? I feel the outlets that gave the game a 10 wouldn't have given it that if it was an xbox exclusive crush yes where where are your thoughts on on this i i'm 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 very conflicted and don't understand why people feel like this um and maybe it's because i am now meeting and getting to know the people that are reviewing these games from these big outlets. So, yeah. as most people know, I was on GameSpot. Um, and Tamor, um, obviously, was the person who reviewed it over on GameSpot and gave it a 10 out of 10. I know Tam. I've, I've sp- I speak to Tam in the DMs. We go back and forth. I've never, I've never met someone in this industry, on a podcast especially, who I've just understood and got them instantaneously. And I don't believe Tam would judge this game any differently if it was on Xbox, whether it was on PlayStation, whether it was on Nintendo, or whether it was on fucking Ouya. It just wouldn't happen. It just wouldn't happen. A game is a good game, and from Tam's perspective especially, I believe he would have given the game a 10 out of 10, no matter what. The thing I don't get is we talk about... We talk about Deathloop... And we talk about Arcane Studios, like we already know they make fantastic games. This was always yeah. going to review well. I've yeah, played I mean, the game for two hours, and I think it's some of the best level design that I've played in games in a long, long time. Where do you come down on this? Yeah, no, I, I kind of agree. I think this is sort of a blowback from the Xbox One generation where Xbox didn't really have games. And that's when this narrative sort of came out. Because you would see people do it all the time with Switch exclusives and PlayStation exclusives. If that was on Xbox, that wouldn't have been reviewed as well. Or people wouldn't have, wouldn't have liked it as much. Because when games were dropping on Xbox, people didn't really play it. But that was never really from the industry side. That was always from the player base side. And I think people have taken that and sort of ran from it. Ran it's, with it. Rather. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I, just, I just don't get it. And maybe I'm, I've had people in my chat come and speak to me about it and be like yeah if this, if this was an xbox exclusive though this wouldn't have this wouldn't have done anything but and i'm like what i th- i think people forget forza <laughs> like forza's been an xbox exclusive for how long and that game reviews well every I'm, single time i'm Flight literally sim. i'm literally getting ready to bring up games now yeah uh, on uh, metacritic to have a look at just like okay well let's this let's put your let's put the theory to action then shall we because i don't i don't understand where this where this narrative is coming from in terms of games not reviewing well on series x like that's what we that's what we've got to talk about now there's no point in, yeah. living in the past we're, yeah, in a, we're, in a, we're in a very very different place to where we was many years ago psychonauts 2 got on metacritic has an 87 out of 100 yeah. Yeah, which is great. A great score to have. Microsoft Flight Sim has a 90. Yeah. Like, th- these are nines and, t- like, eight nines and tens. And Yeah, and mind you, those are, like, some of the first two big games to come out on the series, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, if you look at Gears 5, Gears 5 has uh, 80 something. I think it's, like, around 85 ish, yeah. uh, if I remember correctly. And that came out on the Xbox One. That wasn't on the series. Um, and you could argue that game's super bloated and certain parts of it received less than others. So 
that's a whole different discussion but games review well when they're done well like if you look at so, the xbox one generation we talked about it all the time like there weren't a lot of good games coming out back then it's, and I was now just to, yeah go on, go on the studios they bought are producing games and those games are being reviewed well like that's really what it comes down to 12 minutes came out a game that was super dis- divisive between lots and lots of people i still haven't had a chance to play it because i'm a bad human being i'm sorry um got a 74 it didn't get a 74 because it was an xbox exclusive it got a 74 because it was a divisive game that some yeah. people enjoyed and some people disliked it wouldn't yep. have i i don't believe it would have scored any better or worse if it was on playstation yeah, I think people forget, like, PlayStation has more exclusives than the ones that are popular and get reviewed well. PlayStation has a ton of exclusives that go under the radar because they're not great games and Hungry get reviewed. Jungle. Look at uh, you. Even, even uh, Destruction All-Stars, is that what the game's called? I'm sure that did not get a great Metacritic score because it wasn't, people weren't in love with the game. Okay, and it's the like... Other, the other thing um, that, that frustrates me about this conversation, I guess, is you are arguing about people's opinions... That is all yep. that a review is. Is is a normal human being, such as me or Crash. We could, yeah. we could, or here at my Xbox and me, we could start doing reviews, and it's something that I'm definitely considering doing. And maybe we will start doing them, and maybe we will start putting numbers on them. We did, we did like a test case with, um, damn, what did we play? What was I'm that you. game? By like, Immune, thank you. Where we did like a review discussion, but we we are. Um, if we start doing numbers, if we give something a ten. It don't mean it's the best game ever. It means we loved that game and it was a ten. And don't get me wrong, everyone has their everyone has their own yeah. own version of what something means if it's a ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, yeah. three, two, one. But seriously, I don't believe. I truly don't believe that if this game was an Xbox exclusive, it wouldn't have scored just as well. I don't believe that. Yeah, I think there's a possibility that you would have had less people talking about it because it was a system that has less people on it yeah exactly um but i don't think like I, I i don't really it's really this semantic thing of people constantly looking at the industry and they're like there's a whole bunch of industry plants or however you want to word it where they yeah. get paid off and that's not yep. usually the case that's usually, by usually that's i mean that's not case. really the case at all it's right the case. It, i don't um, know any i don't i've been in yeah. the industry now on and off consistently five years let's call it seven years in total right yeah i've and i have come across plenty of industry people i i've I've been very fortunate a lot of them follow me on twitter and stuff and we we have deep conversations and stuff like that like i've never come across somebody and i've been at egx's when people were drunk and and someone's like oh you'll never guess what this person offered me this amount of money to give this a good review not at your ign's your game spots your the top 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 press outlets let's call it like that yes yeah. i've heard it from uh influencers of like not even so much you don't it's more like oh please don't say anything negative here's your paycheck here please don't say this but that's on the influencer side i've yes. never known it on the side of of press of ign of 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 GameSpot, insert company name here because i don't have a favorite like it just to me it's just a stupid conversation I don't understand yeah. the narrative. I don't understand and it. It's also one of the things where, like, the way leaks and rumors circulate in the gaming sphere, like, if that was a real thing, we would hear about it a lot more other 100%. than just an- when fans are angry that a review, a game got reviewed well or poorly or whatever the case is. Like, you'd hear about it and there'd be stories about it. And it would have been, somebody would have broken the story at some point for some game that paid off people to review it well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um... It's an interesting one. Let's go into the next one from a wild Jeremy Enters who says, Finish listening to my Xbox and me with the wonderful host at MC Fixer at Crescent at Matt P Video. Now, I need to see hashtag Halo with the boys. Also, I was wondering uh, how you guys are liking the reviews for Deathloop and if you think it's getting a 10 out of 10 because it's a PS5 slash PC and not Series X slash S. Once again, it's the same, it's the same thing. It's that I don't i don't i don't think so i just i just don't think that is the reason why it's getting 10 out of 10s it really isn't if anything if these people were playing it on pc it wouldn't have got 10 out of 10s because apparently the game was broken on pc like really badly broken so 
I think you have to respect the fact that it works on the console that is out there. Number one being the PS5. Number two, you have to respect the, the pedigree well, that is um, Arcane. Yeah. You have to respect the fact that it's a good game. It does something different that we've never seen before. Yeah. I don't, like Honestly, the argument's also kind of weird because like you're arguing one of two things when you try and make the argument. And I'm not saying Yami's trying to make the no, argument. No, it's more of a question. It's not really an argument. Yeah. yeah. But like you're arguing that A, the game doesn't deserve a 10 out of 10 and that um, that developer didn't make as good of a game as people are claiming, was, which is kind of an insult to the developer. Or B, the reviewer... Uh, reviewed it incorrectly and the game didn't deserve or their opinions essentially wrong is what you're saying or they were bought out or whatever it is and again that's insulting to the person who's reviewing the game like we're allowed to have different opi opinions and stuff like that um some people i've seen the game also got eights and stuff like that do you then say that the eights are more valid or less valid because those up. are xbox fans or stuff they, like they that exactly they don't get brought up they yeah don't they don't yeah. fit the narrative yeah oh absolutely they don't fit the narrative they don't like I won't mind. This isn't a game that got tens everywhere. Yeah, it's like, just it a couple a, of tens. It got a lot of higher numbers everywhere. Yeah. And people are talking about it in the game of the year conversation. And again, from what I've played, very, very short amount. I think it will be in the game of the year conversation. I, I've not, it's, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Um, last one here from Slayer, which says, we briefly spoke about this, uh, this in an earlier post, but can you guys talk about the Xbox community's reaction to Deathloop's reviews in today's episode? I feel as though it needs addressing, and I don't know what you think. For me, implying Deathloop got nines out of ten, nines and tens because it's a PlayStation exclusive is ridiculous. The game is on PC as well. Also, Xbox exclusives like Psychonauts 2 got at 89 on uh, Open Critic. I didn't see any more. Uh, anyone make uh, reservations? Um, the reverse. Sorry, reverse suggestions. Appreciate it. Reverse uh, suggestions. Um, there. Can we all stop with the tribal fanboys and? and there really isn't a need to manufacture these conversations for the sake of being a conversation. Oh, conversational. I totally agree with you, Slayer. I think it's just a case of <laughs> if this was still multi-platform, it would be a totally different ballgame. But because it would don't, I will say, I put out a tweet saying, um, I don't know if you saw it or not, but it was like, um, Xbox have a game that are getting 10 out of 10s on some of the biggest outlets and it can't be played on Xbox. Gaming in 2021 be wild. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's Gaming absolutely true. When you think about wild. it, yeah. Deathloop's, uh, is Deathloop Xbox's best reviewed game right now? Yeah. Uh, well, no, yeah. I think... Uh, no, I think... Um, Flight Slim? Flight Slim is, God. Okay. I think that got a 90. I don't think Deathloop... That is playable on Xbox. It is. It is on Xbox yeah. as well. Um, yeah, just to sort of round this up and put a bow in it, it's just no. I, I, if you want my opinion, no, I do not believe the review. This game reviewed better because it was on PS5. Yeah, I, I, like, I agree. like, don't get me wrong. I guess, I guess there could be a conversation to be had of you're playing on a system that you're more comfortable playing on because that's your. Um, your primary console. I think there's another conversation to be had of like the controller now, like the controller yep. to some people could add a level of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A level of immersiveness. Immersion. Yeah, exactly. That could then help it score a little bit better on PlayStation compared to Xbox because it has a feature that Xbox doesn't have. Just like we like to sit here and give credit to Xbox for quick resume and everything else, you have to give credit that the adaptive triggers and the microphone in the in the uh, controller and things like that can add to the experience. We have to give credit there. You yep. can't just... We can't just be... oh. This is good, this is good, this is good, this is good, this is good. Like, no, it's not how it works. It's not who I am as a person. Um, but yeah, I just, I, no, I, I, yeah, I've answered this now. Would you, what, any, any finishing thoughts on this, Crush? Stop being negative, man. There's no reason to, like, always be negative when you're talking about stuff. It's, when you look you're at this at the end everyone. of the day. You're talking about everyone, yeah. not just these questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, <laughs> not just these questions. Because in my mind, I'm also thinking back to uh, last week. What was it we talked about last week? Um, the comparison between uh, 
Sony and Microsoft. What was it exactly we talked about? I can't remember uh, exactly. Oh god, I can't even remember. That was a whole week ago, Crash. I don't know. Don't ask me things about a week ago. <laughs> All I know is that there was something <laughs> negative last week as well that yeah. bothered me. And this, when I first read this, it just like sort of compounded on that because this question got asked towards the beginning of the week after we, like recently after Once we recorded it. Out, it. Out, yeah. Yeah. And it's just sort of like, just stop sometimes like some there's legit reasons to be negative and re legit criticisms to have but when they're not necessary and they're just like putting uh gas on a flame or whatever the case be like just stop and think for a second is it is this absolutely necessary necessary and is there a reason behind this other than just being angry right the answer to both those questions is no yeah just so you're aware it's not yeah <laughs> i think i've damaged my monarch I got a new monitor and I think I've scratched it in two places. Not happy. All right, anyway. Uh, next question from Sarah Squid 69 What time is hashtag Halo with the boys going to start? Halo with the boys. Halo with the boys. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. 30 subs you guys, away. You guys are not even going to do it, so I'm fine. Not even worried about it. Don't need to set a time because it's not going to happen. Uh, next question from Angel Boy. Recore. Bloody hell, Angel Boy. This is a question out of nowhere. Recall yeah. recently became five years old. If its game was released now, how do you think uh, it would... Sorry. Now, do you think it would have been more successful? If this game was to get a remake or a reboot, would you want um, amateur, amateur and level five concept to make it again or completely different studio? Angel Boy, I haven't thought about Recall in five years like seriously what would you mean i played it uh i think i played it like last year or something like that and i brought it up i think i played it on the series s and it's one of the reasons i played it um and you thought about it then we had a conversation about it okay so i haven't thought about it in four years um wh why is this a qu uh, no i don't think it'd be more successful because no. It's it wasn't a, a game. terrible game, but it wasn't a great game. So I don't think it would be more successful. Um, and I don't care who makes it because I don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, this is one of the cases where, like, even if this game were to come out, like, ReCore has so much baggage with it. Like, people wouldn't, like, be looking for it. And also, the game really wasn't that great. It wasn't I'll be that, honest. It was like, terrible either. Like, we can't see even that. No, it wasn't. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible. It was terrible. I refuse. I refuse. Bad. I refuse. It's pretty bad. I refuse. To be fair, I played it like four years after it came out. So if I had played it when it came out, I might have had a different opinion on it. But four years later, going back to that game, and I also had a negative opinion on it based uh, at that point because of all the what everybody said about the game. Yeah, but I didn't have a great time with that game. Fair enough. Next one from Alder Slayer says, Quick, sorry. Question, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Final Fantasy VII Remake is outside of its exclusivity window and we still don't know if it's coming to Xbox. Do you th guys still think it will come? If so, when will it be released? Yes, it will come to Xbox at some point, I believe. Um, when? It's a great question. Well, there was just these leaks about this NVIDIA stuff. Um, and I believe Final Fantasy 7 was a part of that. Um, Quick note about the NVIDIA stuff. Cool. Some of the NVIDIA stuff are placeholder stuff that's not really like indicative of anything. Which it is very confusing real. about that. Yeah, it, it could, could be, be real. real. Look, we'll take it with a pinch of salt. But it, look, I, yes, I still think the game will come to Xbox at some point. When it does, I don't know. And why it isn't there yet if the exclusivity window is done now, I don't know. Could it get announced at Tokyo Game Show of Xboxes? Because that's a great place to do it. I think whenever they can release the integrated version is when we'll get it on Xbox. You think you're going to wait for assume... the entire package? Yeah, because the integrated version isn't just um, the DLC. It's also no. the upgraded next-gen version. So I do think they wouldn't want to put out the... Um, quote unquote last gen version i guess um and that be sort of the experience xbox players get i think square enix from a point of view of getting the best optics for the game would probably wait to be able to put the best version out on the platform also and i'd assume that that's like sony when they were like we want the dlc probably was like let's make another deal because the last one worked really well for them 
I mean, and I'm sure for itself. Squeenix as well. Yeah. It could go on any console. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> it could go on anything and it would do well. Let's be totally honest. A uh, couple more questions we got here is uh, from Stead. Do you think Game Pass is part of the reason third parties are doing exclusivity on PlayStation? I wonder if enough people think uh, think is the game on Game Pass. No, then I can't wait. Then I can wait and see if it comes to Game Pass. Sorry, your words that really weird. Um, might put devs off releasing and date releasing and date on Xbox, especially if Sony offers them a truck for the cash to release on PlayStation. I know I've bought less games since I got Game Pass, and I tend to not buy it at launch unless it's something I really want. No. I, I, again, I don't. I know. I don't think that's it. I just think it comes down to money. I, I said this last week, and I'll say it again because this is definitely piggybacking off of last week. I think X, Xbox have said they have openly said, and there's data to back it up. I believe um, that games are selling better even when they're in Game Pass. Number one, because not everyone wants to license their games and know that it can be taken away at some point. Um, have a look at what happens with uh, Forza uh, Motorsport 7 and things like that. And number two, it's word of mouth, especially if it's a, especially if it's a multiplayer game. Um, yeah. But no, I, I don't think it's got anything to do with that. It just comes down to money. That's all it comes down to. Developers need want to recoup their development costs back as quickly as possible. So, uh, publishers as well. Like That is the aim of the game. Make your money back, then be profitable. And if Sony is sitting there going, we'll give you an exclusivity for it. Give me, a, give us it for exclusivity for a year, and we'll pay you this much. And the Xbox are going, well, we're not going to do that. They're going to go where the money is. It's as yeah. simple as that. Yeah, it also might be like studios. Like we've talked, we talked about it last week. Was that if Xbox were to do something, they'd more than likely um, want it to be on Game Pass. That because studio could be like. Well, us putting it as an exclusive and then having it come to that platform or whatever might be better for us business-wise. And it, it's also just the case, Xbox isn't in the market for uh, exclusives, timed exclusives. They're in the market for studios. That's what we've seen time and time again, is that they're trying to buy big studios whenever they get the opportunity. And that might cut into whatever budget would be for exclusives. And Phil's talked about it. We've talked about it so many times isn't a fan of exclusives and we've seen that to be true to this day that they don't really do time exclusives we've seen them pop up here and there but it's not something that they really go after like that if they, if xbox could buy one studio one like one thing more for you what would it be like you can't say timed so exclusive no I'm talking about like <laughs> so a, whole company. a studio yeah, well yeah oh. a, a first part like one of the big biggest studios like if you had to pick one that would become over and be exclusive. Not that, again, I'm not saying they're acting like this is what yeah. we want. I'm just saying, like, if you had to pick one, what would it be? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I would like them to pick up... Wow. I don't... You think? Yeah. I, I think I'm falling in love with Square Enix in, like, a way that I am okay. very shocked about. Because, like, I've definitely become more of a um, Final Fantasy fan as time's gone on. And that's definitely a series that frustrates me when it's not on Xbox. Um, obviously, we've got the we've got Final Fantasy VII not on Xbox. Final Fantasy XVI is going to be a PlayStation exclusive. You've got... What's that um, Dark souls -y type Final Fantasy game that's coming out? Oh, um... I don't Final remember what it's called. I know the one you're talking about as yeah, well, but I can't remember The audience, yeah. though. Um, and like it bums me out that none of those games are going to be on Xbox if I'm being totally honest don't get me wrong I've mm. got a Playstation I can still play them but you know what I mean um, yeah and obviously they've got stuff like Life is Strange and I feel like they could double down on things like that if Microsoft was just like gave them unlimited money sort of thing to like do and like I, I don't know there's just a part of me that like really enjoy Square games at the moment and don't get me wrong doesn't mean they make the best games avengers i had a good time with avengers that doesn't yeah. mean avengers was the best game on god's given earth because it wasn't yeah like, that's not let's not pretend um and there's a few other bits that they've got coming up that, that have got me excited um the back catalog could do really well in terms of well, being remade and things yeah. like that we could get the bouncer 
Christ, what do you know about we the could. Bouncer? I know absolutely nothing. You don't know about the Bouncer? I don't know about the Bouncer. Oh my god. I have no clue what that guy. is. Okay. You'll learn. You'll learn. learn. Bouncer something. with the boys. Hashtag Bouncer with the boys. I don't think it's going to catch on. I don't think it's going to catch on. I don't think so. Have you one? So. Uh, honestly, I can't think of one. Like, it would be... Rocksteady would be cool. There's like a whole bunch of studios that I think That's the whole cool, of WB then. Yeah, the whole of WB. But like, I can't think of one specifically that I'm like, I would like Microsoft to pick it up at the moment. At the spot, I can't think of one. I apologize to everybody Fair listening. Enough. I hope no, you guys can good. forgive me. You're good. No, we can't forgive you. You suck. You're fired. But stay for the rest of this podcast. Bye, guys. Right? I'll see you guys you. later. No, we need you for the rest. We need you for the rest. Uh, last question this week uh, from BT Maverick 707 says, Hey, everybody. Is that meant to be your version of hello? Hey, everybody. That's what it says. Like, every. You see it, Chris, right? There's You're one crazy. V and then a whole bunch of E's after that. That's what I'm saying. Every. You're putting. Okay. That... E. That's still. This is in the wrong spot. What do you mean? You're putting an emphasis on the on the Y. No. Every. E. Every. You're every. putting the emphasis after the R. Every. It'd be everybody. Oh, everybody. It doesn't sound as good. Everybody. You sound like a pirate now. Ever. Okay, anyway. Uh, my question <laughs> is, should Microsoft keep their first party next-gen games at $60 price value over the next few years to stay competitive? Also, since we're all potatoes, what is your guys' favorite potato dish? I'll take my mom's twice baked potatoes over anything that one guy sorry why is there a why is there a knife i don't get why there's a knife he puts a knife every time okay okay <laughs> okay fine fine um i mean um did i miss something xbox have said they're keeping their price point in the same place uh they might have i didn't see that i'm gonna be honest whether they said it or not i didn't see them changing the price point because they yeah. want people to go to Game Pass anyway. They get a large amount of revenue from Game Pass as well. So, uh, sh so should they keep it the same price? Yes, they should. Because undercutting their competitor, if you've got the same level of quality games, um, if they've got something on Uncharted's level, on Last of Us level, on God of War's level, like then yeah, they sh and they can undercut. Then yeah, it's a great it's a great thing to do. At the moment, they haven't got anything like that, and that's the problem. It's you can charge sixty dollars for for Gears, which I love Gears of War. I think it's a great game, but it's not to the level of some of the other games I just mentioned on the competitors' console for me. Um, very different games, though. So they're not an apples to apples comparison. There, that's more an apples to oranges comparison. Before anyone comes for me. Um, but yeah, I think keeping the price point low as possible has got to be Xbox's main point of view. Features, services, price point. As, yep. the, as quick as they can get the Series X down in price, they should. As quick as they can get the Series S down in price, they should. As quick as they can keep... If they can keep prices of games at 60 they should. If Game Pass can carry on being $1 with these promotions, they should. Because that's how they're going to convert over a lot of people. Uh, that and, of course, the most important thing, good games good first party games and uh, the yep. services i think they got uh, the the games i think they have in the works i don't think they've got right now they have it in the works obviously we've got a lot of games to come out very very very, very soon um and we'll see and we'll see uh, to be fair i'm not putting enough credit on on the games that have been released this year for xbox because they just released yeah. flight sim and um, psychonauts. psychonauts like psychonauts yeah. is it's reviewing is absolutely one of the best platformers at the moment out there. Uh, Flight yeah. Sim, again, not a game that I'm interested in, but it's one of the best simulation flying games out there. So maybe I'm just doing... I'm giving. Maybe I'm not giving enough credit where credit's due when it comes to um, Xbox's first pie. Yeah, I get what you're saying, though, because it is also relatively new into Xbox having so many successes in such a short amount of time, is that I do feel like for a price increase, like you'd be have to be batting at that for a while before you can like justify maybe doing that but i also like xbox also has game pass and that changes the way they price everything and that changes the whole dynamic of how they do business as well agreed agreed 
You know now that I'm thinking about it, Grush. You know when he's like, Hey, everybody! I should have replied with, Hi, Dr. Nick! Do you remember that from The Simpsons? I don't watch The Simpsons. You never watched The Simpsons? I've watched like an episode here or there, but no, I never really watched The Simpsons. Bro, I don't even know why I do a podcast with you. Crazy. I don't watch The Simpsons. I don't watch uh, South Park. Didn't really watch movies growing up. Mo- Two of they're TV parents, shows. I understand they're TV shows, but I just want to throw in movies there. Okay. You've seen Back to the Future? Back to the Future, yeah. All right, cool, cool. We're fine. We're fine. All three of them. Um, uh, to be fair, I only watched them like five years ago, so I can't say much. I can't say much. Uh, what's been in our box, Crash? We will start with you. What have you been playing, my friend? Uh, I started a game known as Lost in Random. Ooh, I've been looking forward to this. I, I, do you know what? Yeah. <laughs> it came out, and I was like, I'm going to play this. And then I just stopped myself in my tracks and went, shut the hell up, Fixer. Just you got too many other stuff. Up. Do you know how much is on my backlog? It's disgusting. Talk to me about Lost in Random, though. How is uh, it? Is it good? Yeah, I like it actually quite a bit. Um, it's very Tim Burton esque, which I like. It's very. Um, if I were to compare it to some of his movies, it'd be Caroline and uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Nightmare Before Christmas, especially, it's, it gives you those vibes throughout. Like at least the first two levels that I've played through, it's very Nightmare Before Christmas okay. uh, esque. Uh, I like the gameplay. The gameplay is surprising, like really, really fun. The way it works, like you hit people, like specific parts on enemies and you get crystals. You collect those crystals. You can roll the dice. And depending on what you roll, depends on what cards you can play. Uh, And that's a super, it's very different from any game I think I've played with a card-like system to do it this way. Uh, A few things about the combat make it feel a little bit clunky, in particular when you're using melee weapons is the only time where it really doesn't feel super well but i think the dodge mechanic if you dodge at the right time they call it a blink where you can sort of you become invulnerable and you can go through enemies and stuff like that Uh, that's very satisfying to do uh the card system like i said i just want to up the card system a little bit more because it's actually very very fun in the way you can when you roll your dice it stops time and it stops where enemies are so you can sort of reposition yourself and choose where you want to put the cards down and you can sort of uh one thing you can do is you can put a bomb in the back where the back enemies are then there's this hand that can push enemies backwards and you put that at the front enemies and you can push all the enemies into one area and the bomb goes off and it hits everybody. So doing stuff like that's actually really fun in the game. Uh, I think the story is super solid so far. It is very much, it's a type of story that you've seen iterations of before, you know, a sibling sister gets kidnapped. You go on a journey to save them, et cetera, et cetera. It's done well though. Um, I think if you like uh, card games, this is something maybe you want to look into, especially if you like Tim Burton movies in particular. I think this is well worth exploring. So how heavy are we talking on the cards then? Because now I'm getting worried. Because you say if you like card <laughs> games. Now, I'm not saying I dislike card games, but yeah. like, how heavy are we talking? Ooh, what do you mean? Uh... So wait, is it like a turn? I thought it was like a turn-based game. Like, not It's not turn-based, but like... How do I it's like imagine? It's like how do I explain it? It's not turn based, but like you use the cards it's, and then fire, and then it does like abilities. Yeah, stuff, so right? it is. Yeah, it does abilities and stuff, and it's very much. It is a mix between. It's very it's Final, like Final Fantasy Seven esque. Yeah. Yes. Okay, where it is, so it's it's, like, it's a mix between act uh, active action, and uh, yeah. turn based. Do we have That's a word for that yeah. yet? Do we have a word? Uh, <laughs> Do we know what that is? I don't <laughs> think so. I don't. There might be a word floating around. I don't yeah. know it. But when I was playing it, it reminded me very much so of um, a little bit more of an in-depth version of Final Fantasy. Even though I don't think the the Final Fantasy VII gets a lot of the credit for that, but Dragon Age Inquisition did that way back when as well. Just yeah, to but... like give a little bit credit to that. Nobody cares yes, about Dragon Age Inquisition. I know. Old game <laughs> I knew you'd old say game. that. Old game. Well, at this point, Final Fantasy VII is old as well. Do you know what? I only uninstalled it off my PlayStation yesterday. Oh, you never played the hard mode? No. Quitter. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. Um, anything else you've been playing? Unless, yeah, no. Anything else you've been playing? Uh, I played the Tales Arise demo. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was sitting there and I was contemplating getting it. I should have reached like, out for a code for you. They asked me if I wanted a code and I was like, absolutely not. 
I have no reason. I'm not going to play this game. I've got no time. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I wouldn't have finished it. I wasn't okay. very much a fan of what I played. Nah, I'm so, hearing great things about it. Yeah, no, let me... So I, the first time I ever played a Tales game was a bit way back in the 360 generation. Um, and I wasn't a huge fan of it back then. And so I play this and it's there's something about these games that are just slow. Yeah. And I, I feel... And that still carries over to this game. It is... This is an action game, all that. Um, but there's something inherently about the way Tales games play that just sort of puts me off of them. Not to say it's a bad game from what I've played. It seems like an enjoyable RPG, and I've heard great things about them, and they've been a super niche game that people really love. Uh, so I'm not surprised to see it getting the love it gets now. It's just very apparent when I went back to it. I was like, maybe this will be the game that, uh, that pulls me into Tales. It's just not. It's just not for me personally, unfortunately. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I've been playing a little video game you may have heard of called NBA 2K22. Now, before I say another word about NBA 2K22, I'd like to be fully transparent. I am working with NBA 2K22, so I'm working with 2K um, as a sponsored content creator for them. So I'm creating um, a certain amount of content every month or whatever, whenever it comes through. Um... So, I am paid by 2K to play 2K in certain videos and things like that. So, take everything I say with a pinch of salt at the end of the day. They put me on the front cover of the game. I don't know if you saw that, Grosh. I did not. You didn't see? All right, well, it's a PlayStation no. 5 copy. So, I don't want nobody coming at me of like, Oh, you're talking, you're talking about PlayStation and you're worse than Matt P. But, yeah, look. Oh. Wow. Wow. It's me on the fix. I didn't know. I didn't know you were. I didn't know NBA 2K22 was about you. It was really the whole cool. game that I actually am okay. the, the cover star. They actually look. See this cover? This isn't That's, actually meant to be the cover. That's the wrong cover. Oh, they, they didn't get your picture me. in time. It's Got it. it. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, I've seen you dunk on little kids. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, I've put about. I mean, I did five hours today. I've probably put about thirty hours into NBA 2K22 already. Um. Spoke about it a little bit last week, but I had played a very, very, very small amount that couldn't even warrant talking about the game. Um, now I've put some time into it. I really like it. It's a very good basketball game. Um, up front, there are a lot of things wrong with the game that I dislike in terms of its low times are atrocious for a next-gen game. Um, the game in certain parts are, were broken. I had to delete. So there was a bug on the Xbox version that for me anyway that you couldn't have over 150 friends so i had to go through and clear out my friends list so i can carry yeah. on playing um it, it just it from a performance standpoint of in the city when you, and that's the, your career mode and all that stuff it just doesn't work as flawlessly as you would expect a game to work in 2021 um even when i'm in games online so much lag um that is it, it becomes problematic and all that stuff is networking uh network code and stuff like that that isn't that isn't detrit that isn't to say the game is bad you know yeah because the actual moment to moment gameplay of nba uh 2k22 is phenomenal it's probably my favorite game of the last five or six it's the hardest one i've ever played and that's kind of why i like it um it isn't it isn't made for casuals and it's kind of unapologetic in that way where you're jumping in and you're playing and it's like it's a, it's the biggest basketball rpg i've ever played you've got your quest systems you've got your dailies you've got your weeklies you've got your, your, your challenges like it's a it's a big old game um and yeah, the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of the game, I really like. The new shot meter, I really enjoy. Um, so what that is, is this, it's, obviously they change the shot meter a lot, but now your stamina is super important. So if you've got low stamina and you take a shot, you don't just shoot. It doesn't just... It's not... It doesn't... You don't guarantee yourself, like, a good shot in that way. Like, it's... So if you've got higher stamina and you take a standing shot, you've got more of a chance of going in compared to if you just sprinted across the across the court to grab the ball to shoot. You've got then a harder shot in, in favour, which is all realistic. It's very, yeah. very realistic. And that's that's kind of why I like it. And um, I've been playing mostly my career. Um, 
And yeah, I'm just I'm just having a really good time with it, to be honest with you. I'm not going to talk about it too much on the podcast. I know that a lot of people probably either turn it off right now or just like get over this. We don't care. Um, but yeah, me personally having a really, really, really good time with uh, NBA 2K22. You, uh, do you, how far do you think it makes it up your game of the year list if it makes it there at all? If you can't say right now, that's absolutely fine. If that's no, uh, I don't think it, I don't think it makes game of the year list. No, personally. N- not at all. Got it. Okay. No, I think I think by the time by the time certain games come out, and there's still a lot. This I've still got a lot to play. Um, it might make number ten. It might make number number ten, number nine. Um, but that's as high as I think it would get in terms of not that that makes it a bad game. Um, it just it's it's not that type of game, you know. Like I don't, unless the story takes this mad twist that I was expecting. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think I don't think it's gonna quite make it up there the way I would like it to. Uh, Other than that, I went and did a thing that you will be able to hear about soon. Good talk, good talk. Um, and I've been playing Deathloop, as I was saying before. Play two hours of Deathloop. Um, I think it's phenomenal from what I've played so far. I am not someone who's ever played an arcane game before because I was always under the impression of, oh, they make stealth games. They make stealth games. Like, it's a stealth game, stealth game, stealth game. That's what people said to me all the time. Stealth, 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 stealth. Absolutely not. It is not a stealth game. You can play it as stealth, but it's not a stealth game. And I'm kind of upset that I never played Dishonored now. You know, like, there's a lot of people, I think, that have thought that, and there's a lot of people that are going back to it all of a sudden, but for me, I'm, like, playing through Deathloop, and I'm like, man, if this is really good, and the story's really good, and the voice acting's really good, and I just got a certain ability that everyone's like, that's from Dishonored! Oh, duh, 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 duh. And I'm like, well, I don't know that, but this ability's really good, like... <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, it's level design so interesting, and so different to... to other games it's it's not open world obviously but it's it's sandboxy and i yeah. love it i love how we'll go do what you want to do then like there's there's the, when you end the mission like it's like there is the exit leave or you can keep turning around and you can find passwords to certain things and you can get more clues and you're building out what is the game of death loop at the end of the day um also you have the intrusions of like other people coming into your game and you have to kill them and it's just fun in a way that I have forgotten how games can be fun. You know? Like, gameplay focus first. For, the story's good, though. But gameplay is king in this game. Like, it's shooting mechanics really good. Um, and, yeah, I'm just... I'm really... I've two hours in, and I'm having a really good time with it. I'm really annoyed that I've not been able to play more of it, but because I've been doing stuff for NBA and stuff like that and just been so sidetracked, I'm like, oh, man, I've, that's all I want to play at the moment is Deathloop. I just don't... I'm just trying to find the time to be able to play it. You, uh... Do you think it's Xbox's best game this year so far from what you've played? No, because I haven't played enough. I didn't play. Yeah. I haven't played Microsoft Flight Sim, and I haven't played. You haven't played Minutes, Psychonauts. I haven't played Psychonauts. What else haven't You're I played? You're so that far behind, dude, dude, dude. Don't. I'm. I'm you level. I'm behind. Yeah. I am, I am. I am. There's like how many months left of the year? Like, uh, we're at like three. Three months. Four. four three and a half. Three and a half. Four. Four. Well, three. yeah, three and a half. Three and a half. Three and a half. And I. I've played. I feel like I've played hardly anything. We got Psychonauts. Lada. Sorry, we got Age of Empires coming. We got Forza yeah. coming. We got Halo coming. Yeah, do you uh, have like, all? You have, games. Bro, yeah, you have to start getting through some games, bro. Yeah, you have to start getting through some games. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you can't. You're thinking right now. You can't say nothing. I know. I know. It's just, it's just that I've been playing other games. Is the problem? Yeah, and no. it's been it's been like I've been, I was playing. It's like last year where I ended up getting through a lot of stuff, but like it was like I was playing only. COD, I think, and then I was playing only. Yeah, games, and then I'm now I've become the one game guy. And the problem is, I only play games when I'm streaming. Yeah. So I, it doesn't I think, leave a lot of time in the day. I think you're gonna have but, to. I think you're gonna have to break that for like a week or two. I think there's certain games that just don't matter. They don't need to be streamed. I don't think Psychonauts 2 needs to be streamed. I don't think... Yeah. Um, 
flight sim. 12 needs minutes. To be streamed. I, don't, I don't think. I think you could stream 12 gone. minutes, or you don't need to for that. For all of those. Because that's not going to end up being game of the year as well. Yeah. So, and right you now, it's know. only stuff that might be game of the year. <laughs> You never know. True. You never know. You never know. You never, you never know. know. But yeah, man, that's what I've been playing this week. Looking forward to to being able to talk about what I did last this week, next week, or the week after, I believe. Uh, so yeah, keep your eyes peeled on the my Xbox and my YouTube channel and my personal YouTube channel. Maybe you should subscribe next week, not this week, just in case, you know. No, no, subscribe this week so you uh, hit it, it hits your timeline, and you get it. Okay. Halo we'll, with the boys. We'll subscribe that. to the YouTube channel. Do it. Okay. Um, before before we move on, before I forget yeah. this, uh, Age of Empires is having a tech test this week. It's open mm. to everybody on PC. Uh, you just need to download the Xbox Insider app on PC, and you can sign up for it. Before I forget. Okay, okay. Uh, this week's dashboard uh, delays central people delays central. Yeah. Uh, which I'm so happy about. I just want you, I want you all to know before we even get into the story. I'm so happy. So happy. It gives you like, time. So happy. Uh, Battlefield 2042 has been delayed until November. Uh, EA has announced that Battlefield 2042 will be delayed until November 19th, pushing the release by almost a month after its original October 22nd release date. In a press release, DICE GM uh, Osaka Gil... Gil... Sorry. Gabrielis... Gabrielison? Cites ongoing complaints with the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, quote, given the scale and scope of the game, we hope our teams would be back in the studios together as we move towards launch. With the ongoing conditions not allowing that to happen safely, and with all the hard work the teams are doing from home, we feel it is important to take, time, take the extra time to deliver on a vision of Battlefield 2042 for our players. It happens, man. It happens. Yeah. COVID, COVID out kicking everybody's butt. At least it's still launching this year. It could yes. be uh, launching next year, early next year, which speaking we're going to talk about a game. Speaking yeah. of early, early next year, Crashway, uh, Dying Light 2 Crashway. delayed until early next year. Um, man, this game can't catch a break. This yeah, game I will cannot be, catch a break. It kind of sucks for this game to launch early next year. Because early next year is packed with games. You get Elden Ring, uh, the Pokemon game comes out, not relevant to us, but there's a few oh, yeah, other yeah. games that release early next year there's as well. Lot. Yeah, um, so it's like, this game is, I think it's kind of set up for failure at this point. Especially no, with it launching early next no, year, I think no, so. No, no, I disagree. I disagree. You disagree? Uh, yeah, no, Dying Light has a big enough fan base behind okay. it that i think the people that care about this game care about this game um and there's a lot of people who never played the first one who are now very interested in this one me being one of those people um no, I think, I think it's going to be okay. Uh, but they had this to say, Techland. Uh, hello, everyone. Today, we have important news to share to, with you about the development of progression of Dying Light 2 Stay Human. It has always been our company's goal to build transparency and honesty communications with our community fans and gamers every day we strive to grow in this element the team steadily progressing with the production and the game is nearly at the finish line the game is complete and we are currently playtesting it uh playtesting it it is by far the biggest and most ambitious project we've ever done unfortunately realizing realized for us to bring the game to the level we envision we need more time to polish and optimize this is why we have decided to move the release date to february 4th 2022 there's more that goes on in this uh, release if you want to go find it, it's on their twitter um no i think they're gonna be okay i hope i'm right i hope, I, I hope right. you are too i don't want the game to like uh i don't want the game to have a bad launch and stuff like that but it is it is not looking optimistic from my point of view for them next year. <laughs> Almost like they need to optimize the game and you're not optimistic. <laughs> anyway, moving Can we on. We're done with the podcast. We're close. It's we're close. Uh, dude, it's Friday and I'm feeling it. Um, it's Friday and I am feeling it this week. Um, I, haven't a, I haven't had a day this week that I haven't gone to bed with a headache. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's bad. Take some Tylenol, Motrin. I don't aspirin. like taking tablets if I don't have to. Take all of them. I'm pretty sure that's what o happens when you OD. I don't think you can OD off of Tylenol. Yes, you can. Saying. I don't think so. You can you can OD off paracetamol. 
Ah, uh, look, I don't know what that is. It's that like might a, be Tylenol. It's just a, it's just a, yeah, that's look, what I think it is. Let me just, let me just say this. Do not listen to me. <laughs> Thanks for any medical stuff. Don't say me. Don't run me into what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. I'm not telling people to take, to, you don't, I was telling people to either. take a bunch of I'm tablets. I'm just saying, I'm saying you me told me. are doctors. <laughs> not that. You did. I don't remember. Nobody uh, clipped that out. That didn't happen. Whatever. Uh, Halo Master Chief Collection to stop getting seasonal updates once Halo Infinite le uh, leeches. Jesus, it has been a long week. Launches. What you need to know. 343 uh, has announced that it plans to halt seasonal updates to Halo Master Chief Collection once Halo Infinite launches. Explaining this decision to the developers said that trying to keep two games updated with content on a seasonal base is not ideal for the studio. Halo Master Chief Collection will still receive content features and stability updates in the future, but on a ready when it's ready basis. Additionally, it was announced that Halo Master Chief Collection Season 8 coming in full of 2021 is the game's final update for the year. Shout out to Windows Central for that information. Are you upset by this? Are you still playing? No, I haven't played Master Chief Collection in forever. But I do think this is kind of good news for Halo Infinite, um, only because they have been putting out a decent amount of content for Master Chief Collection that people have been enjoying. So if that carries over into Infinite and you're getting a similar quality of content, I think that paints a good future for Halo and the content that it gets uh, post-launch. Mm. Agreed. Next up. Last but not least, leaked Xbox exclusive Red Fork screenshots show weapons, environments, and menus. Uh, this is Arcane's game, in case you guys have forgotten. Images of Arcane Studios uh, Xbox and PC exclusive Red Fork have leaked online in an anonymous imager post. The screenshots prominently feature many of the game's weapons, environments, and menus. The images confirm that much like previous Arcane games, players will be able to use different tiers of weapons and variety different skills there will also be various types of missions for players to complete um obviously leaks are never nice this isn't what anybody um from the studio probably wanted um which is a shame but nonetheless it makes me more excited about the game <laughs> yeah i <laughs> Seeing that the game actually exists in some form is good, you know, um, instead of just a CG trailer. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm sure this isn't how they wanted it to be shown. I'm sure yeah. this isn't how they, it, it, there's one, that, look, again, I don't want to, I don't want to be too, too, um, judgmental on this. I think yeah. it's unfair. I think it's unfair for oh, me absolutely. to sit here and go, Oh, it looks like an arcane game, or whatever else that I could say um, out there. You know, I just, I, it looks interesting. I am, I am looking forward to this game, um, and we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see, see yeah. until there's more information because I just, again, the 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 it's, screenshots that are shown, it looks like a video game. Yeah. And it's it's like you said, it's unfair to judge it based off stuff that they didn't even want to show us. Right, this isn't something they plan. This isn't how they planned on us seeing it, and that goes to on a big way of a rollout for a game. So if people, if like judging it off of this stuff is incredibly unfair to the game, and it's unfair to the studio especially. Yeah, well, uh, one thing I will say is, um, it looks like an arcane game. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, Crash, let's plug, 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 and get ourselves out of here, brother. What have we got to plug this week? Halo with the boys. Look, if you're listening to this on Spotify, SoundCloud, wherever you are, and you haven't subscribed to the YouTube page, I want you to go to the YouTube page and subscribe. Only, even if you don't care, even if you happen upon this podcast and you're still here at this point in time, which would be wild, and you're like, I don't really care, do it for one thing, and that's for the detriment of Fix. He does not want to play Halo with the boys. Do this solely as a prank as a troll as an annoyance to fix that's why i ask you go sub uh, subscribe to my xbox and my youtube page he's not wrong i do not want to play halo with the boys i do not and you know what you know when i said it once it escaped yeah. my lips i instantly regret it instantly I, I think you'll be fine i don't think we'll hit it no me either but i still it's still a little bit too close to comfort 
I, we'll see. We'll see in a few. You know we'll what, see in a few days. Do you know what upsets me the most about all this is seeing all yeah. the people that are subbing to the channel, and I'm like, you motherfuckers weren't sub beforehand. Like no. people that are my <laughs> anyway, peers, specifically and my for this. I don't want to shout out anybody, but Mario Riviera. You know. You know. They just want Halo with the boys. Yeah, it's just like it takes a movement like Halo with the boys to get the people into one unified unit. Bro, did you see the comments of last week's episode? Uh, for Halo with the boys, it's just Halo with the boys. Halo with the boys. Yeah, Halo with the boys. almost Halo at, with like boys. even if the co even if the comment like went to talk about something else, there was at least a hashtag Halo with the boys. A whole bunch of tweets as well. Bunch of Halo with the boys tweets. Yeah. I respect that. I like it. Yeah, stupid. Absolutely. I don't stupid. think so. Stupid, 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 stupid. Did you see the dumb one from Zygo? Dinner date with Crash? Absolutely not. <laughs> That's my favorite one. Oh my god. One day I fix. wonder why that had one an day. upvote. I wonder why I had an upvote. What the hell? I think I did like that one. <laughs> um, you, can find sure every, you can find me everywhere at MC Fixer. Like I said, I'm working on something that's going to be out on my main channel and over on my on my Xbox and me. We've got two lots of bits of content going out very, very soon. Uh, please go support it. I Like I said, I am sponsored by 2K. I just put a sponsored video. I'd love it if you guys would go and click it over on my main channel. As, as you know, uh, sponsored content is, is uh, not easy to come by. And if they perform well... Um, you usually get asked back. So what we, what I do not have in numbers, this is what I always say, what I do not have in numbers, my audience over on MC Fixer and obviously the My Xbox and Me audience make up in abundance in engagement. So if you can go over there, like the video, drop a comment, watch it, like let it run through all the way through so we get the watch time, it would help a great deal. So please, please, please do consider going to do that. YouTube.com slash MC Fixer. Um... But yeah, thank you all for watching and listening as per usual. And until next time, we will love you, leave you, and see you all later. Oh yeah, Matt P died. Goodbye.